and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jokob Hack, I'm your host, and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. This is Cork Gadget, and I'm starting off a new production tricks series. So this is going to be a similar series with several parts, breaking down a track like I did with the drum and bass production tricks series for Cork Gadget. And while I was preparing for starting recording this episode, I was a bit unsure about what kind of genre I should put into the title name for this series. And so I turned to a professional DJ. His name is Carsten Heinmüller and he works for Native Instruments. He's been a professional DJ for a long time and he's making some awesome stuff. I'll provide a link at the end of this episode so you can go check out his music. So he basically told me that I should call this post dubstep and so I'm going with that. Right, so let's get into this. So at the moment we have nine gadgets loaded in this project and we're gonna focus on the drum gadgets right here. And as you can see, I'm using three instances of one of the latest gadgets in the latest update. Now, I can't pronounce this name and I've tried to find videos on YouTube with someone actually saying it, but I can't find that. All I can find are videos where someone has used a text to speech program and they leave a lot to be desired. So if anyone here speaks Brazilian Portuguese, then why don't you put up a short video where you actually say it? Either way, I absolutely love this this gadget. It's got some of my most favorite type of drums in there and it's perfect because it's got a UK garage set in there. What I've done is I've exchanged pad number six to be the same as pad number two, only I've just pitched this one a bit higher. It's a common technique to pitch stuff up and down when producing UK beats types of music. And so here's the entire drum pattern. It looks like this. Now for a track like this, I usually shadow my drums and you might wonder what that is. Well, it's basically me using another drum loop to create kind of a fill out in the background. And in this case, I've used the same drum loop, only I've processed it with effects. Let's have a listen to the drum shadow. And this is basically the same drum kit with the same gadget, the same pattern. So what's making this sound like it does are the effects. And so we have to go into the effect strip here. So we press IFX and we get to the insert effect slots. As you can see, I've got four effects in here. And the first one is a compressor. And I do that basically just to even out the volume level for my track. Next, I've got a decimator and it's to crush the drum sound. After that, I've got a filter and it's set to bandpass mode. And I've done that to filter off the high frequencies and the basic frequencies. I only need the mid frequency stuff for my drum shadow. Next, the most important thing for this drum shadow is the reverb because it makes the sound wet and it spreads it out in the audio spectrum. So let me play this back again and I'm going to turn off the effects one by one. And you can hear there's not much happening when I turn off the compressor because I'm just doing slight, slight changes just to keep the peaks in check. If we go into the decimator here, we can see that I've got a sample rate about 1583 hertz. And I've pulled down on the bit rate to 4 bits, so I'm crushing it quite a bit. And the mix is up 100%, so it's basically just a crushed signal coming out of there. Now we go back, I'll turn these on. And we're going to mix the signal back in. Yeah. 
And that fills out the space between the drum hits and everything and creates a texture, something that is important for this type of music. Okay, so that's making up the actual drum sound. But then you might wonder, what is this for? Well, it's basically just a pump signal for the sidechain compressor that I'm using on Phoenix here. And Phoenix is the gadget I'm making the bass with. I'm gonna go into that in the next episode. This way of sidechaining is something I do always. If you want to know more about that, I've got an awesome episode explaining what sidechain compression is, how it works, how to set it up, and why I choose to work like this. It's all explained in that video. I'll link to it at the end of this episode. Right, so that sums up the drum part of this series, and in the next one, we're gonna go into the bass. So before I round this video up, in the beginning of this episode, I talked about Carsten Heinmüller, also called Soul Mind, and I suggest you go check out his uh, stuff on SoundCloud. One of the latest things he's got there, it's a one hour and 40 minutes mix, and it's one of the best mixes I've ever heard. We had a talk about that when I was there for the mobile music in the Making Symposium, 2017 putting it out there so you know what year I'm talking about and I met up with Carsten for lunch and coffee he's a great guy and he's an awesome DJ when I started listening to that mix I'll just put in a splash screen here of that thing I couldn't stop listening to it because it's got all the types of sounds and music that I love so much so go check that out thank you so much for watching all comments and ratings are very much appreciated I've also got a patron account so if you want to support creativity and good content content here on YouTube, then I suggest you go sign up on Patreon. Now, if that isn't your cup of tea, then you can always share my videos, uh, press the thumbs up if you think my videos deserve it. And um, yeah, that's, well, that's pretty much it. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have fun doing it.